Hello, my name is uh, Cristina Poggi. I've been a breast educator for more than 20 years. I've been dealing with training and education for 11 years. This video belongs to a series of presentations about digital mammography. As usual, I'll be using a lot of images and few joins too to illustrate today's subject, mistakes of extension and rotation the tissue acquired in the CC projection, comparing them with the quality criteria. The extension of the tissue acquired is of paramount importance, as important in this paper written by a group of our colleagues on radiography in 2017, without all breast tissue included or not well visualized, all other aspects of image quality are not relevant. There are two principal clinical quality assessment systems which include the extension of the tissue acquired, but both of them are qualitative systems and therefore scarcely reproducible. Furthermore, the quality of the CC projection is the most difficult to assess. Summarizing, these are the clinical quality criteria for CC projection. Of crucial importance, the complete documentation of the inner quadrant, and, when is possible, of the cleavage too, as much as possible of the outer one, the line that connects the nipple to the anterior border or pectoral smile or PNL, posterior nipple line, should be of the same length as that measured on the Miller on the same side, could be shorter on CC but less than 1 cm, nipple in profile and on the midline. Petralis Maya should be, if possible, shown. Actually, what really matters is not the muscle in itself, but the retromammary space. We are to show it as much as possible because of the high possibility to find a lesion this side, located just in front of the muscle. Surely the quality criteria are very difficult to meet, especially for the CC view. I invite you to read this paper. You'll find the link in the bibliography at the end of this lesson. It's not always possible to show pectoralis myo muscle. If everything goes right, you don't exceed 50% of the patients. Also achieving the documentation of the breast thorax connections is not easy. To make things worse, inner and outer quadrants are not always of the same shape and size. You can see a breast like this a very few times. What does the possibility to show petrolis myon CC projection depend on? As you see, for a given radiographer's competence and experience on many things, crucial the width of the breast footprint, that is to say, the outline of the breast base on the chest wall, on breast consistency or firmness, that is to say, how easy is to manipulate the breast, on toesis or sucking, which is how easy is pulling the breast away from the thorax, very important patient's posture and compliance too. But it is not all. It depends also on the mammography unit we work with. This is the footprint in green, the volume of conus the breast in yellow, and this one in, in pink is the skin envelope. All of this comes from an idea developed by Dr. Brondil, an internationally known plastic surgeon, but it is so valid for breast radiographers too, as I said to him, to have included the idea in my teaching method. To be clear, these are three cases with different anatomical parameters for extension of footprint, for volume and for skin envelope. All of them have a huge impact on the quality of images we can produce. Consistency of firmness and toesis especially. Here you can see how much of the deep planes, retromammary space and muscle you can show on your image depending on those parameters. As I had told you before, muscle documentation depends on the mammography unit too. I invite you to do this test. Switch off the light in the room and turn on the light field. You will see an inner shaded area, this one, which is not active, namely. It can't produce image because it is filled with linking electronics between the mammography unit and the radiographer's console. Depending on the width of this area, you lose more or less the tissue 
and the possibility to show the muscle on the image. Obtaining the documentation of the skin envelope on both sides would be relevant. The most important task we breast geographers have is showing as much tissue as possible, but it is not easy. It is strongly dependent on the footprint extension and on the degree of ptosis. To complicate matters, inner and outer quadrants could be different in shape or in size, as you see in the second example. Here, the outer quadrant is dominant, namely bigger than the inner one. In such a case, having the nipple on the midline is wrong because it will lead to a loss of a portion of the dominant quadrant. But how do I know this situation from the incorrect lateral to medial rotation of the breast? You should look at two aspects. First, the nipple points to the missing tissue. So, if the medial rotation of the breast had really been performed, Media tissue would have been lost as a result, and as you can see, it is not. Second, and this is more important, look at the position of pectoralis major. If it is central, you can be sure the geometry of acquisition, the axial plane, is correct. The chest wall is on a plane perpendicular to the mid sagittal plane. Let me clarify. This one is an example I often show to my students. Right CC with a slight rotation lateral to medial, but not enough to lose much tissue um, of the inner quadrant. The muscle is central and lunette shaped. Look at the left CC here. The medial directed rotation is more important. A bit of deep inner quadrant is lost. Actually, not very much, because the patient's nipples were very, very medial naturally, but the muscles are shifted sideways and took the form of a fan as an exaggerated CC. The nipple points to the missing tissue, we said. In such cases, you see, the rotation has led to an important tissue cutoff. Lateral here, medial here. Rotation could lead not only to loss of tissue, but also to a deformation of the breast, to the production of what I called a pointed-shaped breast, due mainly to oblique position of the patient thorax, with respect to the detector, ipsilateral hemithorax first. All the structures inside falsely shift in the image. This is very important. In a correct geometry of acquisition, the circled dense area you see in white would be in a very different position. Roughly like that. Distortion of glandular structures and Cooper ligaments could be caused by an improper action of stretching and flattening tissue out. By an improper positioning technique, you see the breast deformation, or by adjusting breast position when the compression paddle is already down. Let's talk about the nipple on the midline. It is surely a very useful point of reference for the radiologist, but if the nipple is naturally very medial or lateral with respect to the mid sagittal body plane, forcing it to the midline implies a loss of the tissue. In the first case, a naturally lateral nipple forced to the midline, the petrolized mire is present only in the lateral part. The medial part is lost. Third example, natural medial nipple forced to a slightly lateral position. This is the result, and there is a cutoff of outer quadrant too. For the example in the middle, there are some reasons more than the not correct acquisition geometry to be considered, but the result is the same. The nipple here is on the midline, seems correct, but as you see, you have lost lateral deep tissue. Uh, the lateral portion of the muscle is not completely documented. Major part, yes, it is. So, the outer quadrant was bigger, actually, bigger than the inner one. That is to say, if the nipple had been medial, we would have shown the tissue lost. Pay attention to the real anatomy of the patient. The thoracic wall has to be perpendicular to the mid-sagittal plane. Here, it is not.
The nipple shouldn't be always on the midline. A typical example of wrong rotation, uh, this time superior to inferior or vice versa. It leads to the condition of the nipple not in profile, in which ratio areola tissue is not well separated from it. F to comply with this criterion, you need to have superior and inferior quadrants in parallel to each other and to the detector. The most important criterion to fulfill remains the documentation, the maximum extension of tissue achievable. The condition that the Napoleon profile should be complied only in the case superior and inferior quadrants are of the same size. In the first joint, for example, with bigger superior quadrant, having the Napoleon profile would mean to lose a portion of them. Anyway, remember nipple in profile at least in one projection of the same side. I'll show you this artifact too. It's a double edge artifact. It's very common. Here it is. It is actually not correlated to the radiographer, but to the reconstruction process of the image. We shall remember Dr. Eklund's words, we must know what a good mammography is to recognize our mistakes and know how to correct them. As usual, this is a short bibliography. To whom could be interested in, these are the links to the first and second chapter of this series. Thanks for your attention. In the next lesson, the last one, we talk about extension and rotation mistakes in positioning for the MLO projection. Bid you farewell and I'm waiting for your feedbacks if you like. To the next time. Bye.